Welcome back to the Central Region Tornado Warning Improvement Project module for Land Spout Warning Methods. The first video covered parts 1 through 4, while the second video will cover part 5, going through some examples. So we've gone over the warning challenges and strategies for Land Spout Tornadoes. So let's wrap it all together with the best practices. Ultimately, we need to communicate the threat through a suite of messaging options. When you see the atmospheric ingredients coming together, of course, be proactive and include the information in the hazardous weather outlook. Issue a short-term graphic and share it on social media. Include a call to action for people if they see a land spout so they know what to do if a tornado develops without a formal tornado warning. Of course, send a message on NWS chat so our partners can be informed and help spread the word. These kind of chats are very well received, so please do them even if you don't always get a verbal response like the ones shown in this example. It's typically very worthwhile to go down this path. Use the phone or radio to let our core partners like law enforcement or emergency managers know that there's a risk for land spout tornadoes. Another thing we can do is issue a legacy text product such as a short-term forecast or a special weather statement to alert people of the risk of land spout tornadoes. For example, a preemptive land spout message using a short-term forecast or a special weather statement might say something like land spout tornadoes possible this afternoon as a headline. And then below, a few tornadoes are possible this afternoon in southwest Kansas. If you see a tornado, seek shelter in the interior room of a sturdy structure. Ultimately here, we want to keep the message clean and simple and encourage people to take the safest action. Another example is to use a short-term forecast or special weather statement to alert our partners about a brief land spout tornado that occurred, but that the threat for additional land spouts is low. This helps acknowledge that the tornado occurred and explains why there is not a warning. The next few slides will help guide you through that process. The suite of messaging options will convey when the tornadic threat doesn't meet the warning threshold. Here's a simple flowchart to help guide the decision process. Does high temporal and spatial continuity exist that permits predictability of future events? If the answer is no, then we are in the alert phase and should use a suite of messaging options. However, if the answer is yes, where we do have enough continuity, then we are in the tornado warning phase and should issue, obviously, a tornado warning. Now, over the next few slides, we're going to go over four different scenarios using the same data from the case shown earlier in this module. The first example is with no reports. The simplified version of the flowchart is in the upper right for your reference. Recall that the near-storm environment and radar both support the potential for land spouts. The SPC mesoanalysis field we focused on was the surface vorticity and 0 to 3 kilometer cape. There was also a reflectivity fine line with convection along it as seen from the half degree radar scan. In this example, there were no reports of funnels or tornadoes. Because we do not have temporal or spatial continuity to support a tornado, the best course of action is to message the threat using the suite of messaging options that we outlined just a couple of slides ago. Here's an example of a social media graphic or outline of that area to include in a special weather statement. The blue shaded region highlights the locations favorable for land spout tornadoes based on the near storm environment and radar data. These means of messaging information serve as an alert that land spouts are possible and tells people what to do if they spot one. After using one or a combination of messaging options for alerting people of the potential for land spout tornadoes, we still need to pay extra close attention to the radar. If high temporal and spatial continuity exists, then a tornado warning should be issued. Let's take a closer look at the radar data and see if this is the case. The first radar image is from 2240Z, and in the interest of time, we'll go forward in 10 minute increments, since this is a slowly evolving event. If this was a real life scenario, forecasters should recognize that the primary threat of the day is land spout tornadoes, so the radar should be set to VCP212 with Mesosales 2 or Mesosales 3 enabled. Back to our simulation though. The base reflectivity is on the left, and the base velocity is on the right. Now the first couple of scans look unorganized on the radar. There's developing storm, but there's no signature in the velocity field. Sometimes storms with these radar features produce tornadoes, but the key is we do not have enough temporal or spatial continuity to issue a tornado warning. One or a combination of alert messaging options is still the best course of action at this point. Now by 2050, it is clear that the storm is located along the boundary. This ties back nicely to our conceptual model, and we know that this storm is in a favored region for land spout development. For that reason, the best course of action is to draw up a tornado warning polygon. Keep up the polygon small because the storm is only moving at about 10 knots and the land spout tornadoes often only last a few minutes. As we continue stepping forward in 10 minute increments, you'll notice that the storm remains along the boundary until the last few scans. 
Recall from earlier that our lowest radar scan is over 7,000 feet above radar level. Given the limited radar sampling and lack of reports, there is not enough temporal or spatial continuity to issue a tornado warning. The best course of action in this scenario is to keep using one or a combination of alert messaging options for the potential of land spout tornadoes, and draw up a warning polygon for each scan to be ready in case a report comes into the office. By the end of this loop, at 2400, the storm has dissipated and no longer poses a threat. Now let's go through the same chain of events, only this time there will be a delayed report. We'll go through the same thought process and use one or a combination of alternate messaging options to alert people of the potential for landspout tornadoes. We will draw up a warning polygon as it becomes more clear that the storm is strengthening and is tied to the boundary. Nothing has changed from the previous scenario, so our methodology should be the exact same as well. That methodology is to closely watch the radar and keep a tornado warning polygon drawn up for each scan. We still haven't received any reports, and by 2400 Zulu, the storm appears to be weakening as it moves off the boundary. However, also at the same time, we see a delayed report on social media directed to our office of a funnel cloud with a caption that says, check out the tornado I saw. Was there a warning? This is an increasingly common occurrence these days since everyone has a phone in their pocket and access to instant communication. In this case, let's assume you trust the source. Despite the fact that you are confident there was a funnel and perhaps even a landspout tornado, based on the current radar data at 2400, there is still not enough temporal or spatial continuity to issue a tornado warning. The best course of action is to use one or a combination of alternate messaging options to inform people about the occurrence of the tornado and also telling them that the threat for additional land spouts with that storm is low. In the past, the NWS offices didn't have a good option to handle these scenarios. So by using this suite of options, we are now able to acknowledge that there was a tornado and inform people about what the threat is going forward. In addition, a message in NWS chat explaining the circumstances would also help serve our partners. Now for this scenario, we'll continue using the same thought process as the previous two. As the storm continues to develop, we start to draw a warning polygon along the storm, keeping it small and updated with each scan. Now let's imagine the same image was posted on social media and directed to our office. Only this time, it came in as the land spout was ongoing. The storm still sits along the boundary, and there's even some rotation on radar. Since you already have the warning polygon drawn up, you can quickly send out a short duration tornado warning once you received a reliable report. This tornado warning will not have lead time, but sometimes issuing a short term tornado warning with zero lead time is the best we can do, especially if it's the first tornado of the day. The science supports this decision and management will too. As we continue looping through the event, notice how the warning polygon is updated to reflect where the threat has ended. And another polygon is drawn up downstream, in this case, by 2400 Zulu. The storm is clearly weakening and we have not received any additional reports, so there's no need to issue a subsequent tornado warning. This last scenario deals with a very timely report. Using the same reasoning that we did in the previous three scenarios, we recognize the threat and message it with one or combination of alert communication options to inform people of the potential for land spout tornadoes. We are still drawing up a tentative tornado warning as in the previous three scenarios. At 2320, the phone rings and it's a county dispatch center saying a deputy is watching a funnel cloud. He's not sure if it's reaching the ground and he can't see debris because some trees are in the way. He says it looks like it's lowering. Now in this case, there is temporal and spatial continuity to issue a tornado warning. Since the polygon is already drawn up, you should be able to get the tornado warning out in a few seconds after receiving the information from the dispatch center. The warning should be no longer than 30 minutes since these tornadoes are short lived. You should also draw up a warning polygon downstream, but in this case the storm dissipates and there's no need to reissue since there's no longer temporal and spatial continuity to issue a tornado warning. So in summary, land spouts are challenging events. It is unlikely to get lead time on the initial land spout tornado because the rotation is small in scale and they usually only last a few minutes. The main objective is to recognize and message the threat ahead of time. Look at the near storm environment and use one or more of the messaging options to give our customers a heads up. If a land spout does occur, you can also use one or more of the messaging options to acknowledge the occurrence and share additional information. Of course, issue a tornado warning if high temporal and spatial continuity exists that permit predictability of future events. And use this flowchart shown here as a decision aid. The bottom line is 
every event is different, not just in terms of weather data, but other information like reports. In the four scenarios that we just went through from the same event, two of them did not have a tornado warning, and two of them did. That's the reality of the world we live in. However, the key is that we have used the same scientific reasoning for each scenario to decide what to issue. If we do that, then every event will be successful. Thank you for watching, and please pass along any questions or comments to your local TWIP liaison.